All right, hello everyone. Today we're going to look at the chart of a cryptocurrency called Shiba Inu. This is a this was a very popular cryptocurrency or an altcoin, one of the alternate lesser known coins, but it had a possibility of increasing quite a lot. And I someone gave me the chart of this, and it this is one of a lot of the coins we don't actually know where they were launched from. We don't have the full birth info for them. But this is one of the coins that we do have the birth info for. So I figured it would be fun to do a, you know, do a chart, do a video on this. And in doing so, I can kind of convey a lot of uh, lessons on financial astrology um, to you guys here on YouTube. But I do have to, of course, you know, plug my financial astrology course because, yeah, so if you guys are into just learning about financial astrology in general, or especially if you're just into crypto or one or the other, then you should really take that course. Uh, we've taught 20 plus hours on just financial astrology. That's the level one master course that you'll see on my Teachable site. Um, that's basically everything I taught for 2021. You'll see how we predicted exact days for the all-time high of Bitcoin. You'll see how we predicted when the bull market would return down to like a, a few days, we predicted the next all-time high. So we pr predicted both all-time highs for Bitcoin in 2021 called both the tops, first try, one shot each from months out. So um, we, and so I have predictions for coming up for this year too. So that um, the level one is all of 2021, everything I taught, that's already come to pass though, but you can still learn about astrology through all of that. And then for 2022, I've just taught the first course on uh, Venus and paying the price. This is where we will plug in Venus into the entire equation. And it's a really good class. I'm really happy with it. And I'm really, yeah, I really hope you guys appreciate the insights that I came up with. And at the end, I share predictions for the next six months. So take that if, you, uh, if you're really serious into this. Okay, thank you for getting through that little uh, promotion. I hate it when the beginning of YouTube videos when they're just like, oh, like and subscribe, blah, blah, blah before they even said anything. So I uh, had to kind of, felt, felt hard to even say that for you guys. Okay, so now the fun learning stuff. All right, so <clears throat> basically one of the biggest kind of mantras to remember for financial astrology and for, no, just for, for markets, for investing in general, and there is astrological truth behind this that I explain a lot of throughout the courses, but the main mantra of my courses and the main mantra to remember is you want to buy when there's blood on the streets and you want to sell when there's peak euphoria. Okay, so buy when there's blood on the streets, sell when you're at peak euphoria. So the best possible time to buy anything, investing in anything was March 11th, 2020, the day that there were literally people collapsing on the streets in China and people were sending out videos and everyone was going crazy and the World Health Organization declared a pandemic. That was when Bitcoin tanked down to its lowest possible point. And if you'd have bought it then and just held on to it, you'd, have, you'd be doing really, really well now. Um, you pretty much could just retire. Um, so buy when there's blood on the streets, buy when there's fear, buy when people are actually afraid and everything's, you know, red and things are going down. That's when you want to buy. And you actually want to sell when everyone's hyped up and euphoric and you two people are saying, oh, Bitcoin's going to go to a million dollars or whatever. That's when you want to actually sell. Okay. And you can see this in astrology. This is just one of the tiny ways. There's a zillion ways I explain how you can see this, but Aries is the beginning of the zodiac. It's hunger, blood on the streets, war. Libra is euphoria. And Libra is the sign of selling and making decisions that get you the highest fulfillment. So that's one simple way you can see how you want to sell at Libra, at euphoria, and not at Aries. Um, okay, so this is the coin Shiba Inu. This is one that had all this hype. You know, people were like, so excited about it they were like oh it's gonna go to so it's gonna go to like a dollar or a penny or something and it was at 0. 0.0000002 or something and so it's like if it had even gone to half a cent it would have made people millions of dollars um and so people people did make money off of it there were people that made a lot of ton, a ton of money off it i'm not saying that but i always knew that this was one of those 
bad deals, basically like something really hyped up. It's going to go up for like an hour and it's going to tank and you're going to lose all your money, kind of similar to Dogecoin. So I was never bullish on this coin. I was never about it. I got paid for it once for a course back in fall of 2021 when the markets were going up and everyone was hyped. And so people paid for one of my courses with that. And then the next day it went up and doubled. And I was like, okay, I'm selling that. And it was the reason I sold it was because a random amateur guy was like, oh, what about Shiba Inu? You don't you think it's going to explode? And this guy knew nothing about crypto. I knew, I knew he wasn't someone who followed it. And he was so bullish on it, knowing nothing about it and just falling for the hype that that was a sign to me I need to sell. So, and so I sold it. And then right after that, it tanked. And so it's the best way to do it. If you don't know any astrology, just follow this mantra. Buy when there's blood on the streets, sell at peak euphoria, sell when all your friends, sell when your mother and your mother's brother are getting into crypto when they were never into it beforehand. Like the moment my brother actually is interested in crypto is when I need to sell it because that's when the mainstream world's actually getting into it. And that's when the big people are going to actually take their gains and pull out. So when it comes to making deals, Mercury is the planet of playing the game of life so that you win. It's the planet of Bhagya or fortune. It's the planet of really playing the markets well. And Mercury is on the ascendant. And also Mercury is currency. It has to do with like <clears throat> actually ex current currency exchanges and stuff. And so Mercury on the ascendant in Cancer, yeah, it makes sense for this to be, this is the chart of what this is. It's a cryptocurrency. And as I pointed out in my chart of the video of Bitcoin, the sixth house has a lot to do with a ledger or a blockchain thing. And look, it has K2 in the sixth. So that's what it does really well. And the lore of that goes to the seventh. So it is a sixth house thing set up for seventh house things trading. So it's a ledger for trade. Um, so yeah, this chart does seem accurate. And it's also cool because just for a rectification for you guys, um, the second house is your name. And so that yeah if you ever want to like rectify a chart make sure the person's second house matches with the sound of that planet and the sound of their name so for example i have mars ruling my second and mars in my second mars rules the guttural so ka ga kor kori kori is a mars sound so you can actually even rectify my chart based on that so this is a uh, got the sun in leo in the second isn't it kind of funny how shiba is basically shiva because B and V are so close in Sanskrit. So from the Vedic standpoint, the sun, Shiva, in the second house in Leo kind of makes sense for uh, Shiva, you know, to be the coin. So it, it has a, it sounds phonetically right too. It matches. So yeah, and this, this chart is known. So yeah, so this does look like the right time. And so if we look at this chart, um, Right off the bat, it's it's really that Mercury in the ascendant that really speaks to the entire story of this chart because Mercury in Cancer is a bad avashta. Um, yeah, as I say, or as my teacher often says, Mercury in Cancer, Mercury star by the moon. So Mercury's in a bad avashta in this chart. When Mercury star by Cancer, one is basically their own worst used car salesman. What I mean by that is you're, 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 it, it means that this person or the or this coin is going to attract people that, that are like this Mercury Cancer too, where they're going to basically, they're going to go for things that they want more than what they really need. Um, the moon is emotional, so clingy, so needy. It colors Mercury in a bad way. Mercury is the planet that's supposed to be rational. So this is a really good example of how the Avashtas affect everything. Um, and this is Mercury star by the moon. So essentially this is a coin thinking I'm going to, I'm going to be like this thing, even though what I really am is that thing. Okay. Or it's, it's basically going to attract people that are going to think, oh, what I really want is to make a lot of money. I want this thing to make me a lot of money. I believe it will debilitate a Jupiter inaccurate beliefs, and I'm going to go for it. And then I'm going to have a totally opposite example <laughs> or experience and get stuck with a loss. So, um, so yeah, like Mercury conjunct the moon, opposite the moon, with the moon, 
in the sign of the moon. These are all ways for Mercury to be starved. So Mercury is also aspected by the moon too. So it's getting it in a double whammy. Um, and it makes you want a deal to seem better than it really is. You just, that is the classic thing of Mercury star by the moon. And that is exactly what this coin has been. There has been, you know, it was created in 2020 and it's all throughout 2021. There was so much hype. People wanted it to be what it wasn't. You see, it isn't Bitcoin. It isn't Ethereum. It isn't Solana or any of these amazing coins that take my course. You'll know about all the good coins that are well supported from astrology and from omens and things, but those are a few of them <laughs> for free. But, uh, but yeah, it's not one of those. It's just not. And it's never going to be, you see. And so the Mercury starving the moon everyone holding this coin still thinks it will go up. They're still holding on to it. And it's the mood and the neediness and the cleanness. And it's, it's just never going to happen. Um, so watch out for a Mercury star by the moon because it's, it's and, and even when it's aspecting. So really, like half the population has this in life in general, more than half. Like I have this in my, in my chart to some degree, not a huge degree, but it's, it is because the planet's, when you really do the Avashtas right, like, you know, all the planets are aspecting to just less, almost every part of the chart to just lesser degrees. The only place Mercury is not aspecting is the second, 12th, the sixth. He's actually hitting every other house to assert just to lesser, more or less of a degree. So that's like when you add up the planet, the planet Earth and you do the numbers, like a lot of the population of the planet is suffering from a Mercury moon Avashta or some other Avashta, you know? and this is one of the main problems, one of the main things with the human condition. We need our mercury. We need to, yeah, solve, like use our intelligence to solve problems, to make more money, to get the bills paid. And then the moon goes in and says, well, I could pay it this way. This way I really want to pay it when you really need to pay it that way, the way you already know how, and you need to just clock in and do it. Um, so yeah, uh, that's basically what everyone did with this coin was they just convinced themselves that it was better than it really is. And um, they, it, it's, it's really easy to do that in the market world to get really emotional. And when moon star by Mercury, it can make one get really like afraid to say no to anything because they're so needy. They just got to take it, you know, but uh, you need to be selective in life. Um, and if something's good for you, it has nothing to do with whether you really want it or not, you know? Um, so that's sort of an, so that's one, this is one example of how we can use the Abashas, even in financial astrology to see if a coin um, is going to do well, or if maybe an investor is really a good investor and we should take their advice or not. We can look at the chart and we can just see, you know, and um, we can just see very clearly with this chart that people are not going to pay attention to the red flags around it because they're just going to want it so bad. And so this neediness of the moon is going to dictate the whole subjective reality around this. And I mean, yeah, the moon, and it, but it does have, you know, look, it has, does have Mars really strong in Aries in the 10th. So it does have a good capacity to do its job. First house is your career. 10th is how well you do it. So the Mars in the 10th shows it actually does do its job as a coin and all um, well. It's good technology. Um, but yeah, Jupiter's debilitated um star by saturn and the moon is applying to that so it can get some gains but not not really lasting ones 11th lord is in the 12th not great first lord is in the seventh which again is is good for trading it shows that it's meant to be it's going to be traded in the markets um but the 12th lord is in the first third lord in the first not really ideal either so it's got some strength and it had its day and it will maybe have its day. It will have its day again whenever Bitcoin goes back up. It'll have a few good times, but no, this is not a good coin to hold for the long term. It's not a good coin to make easy money off of like a lot of these other things. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And um, yeah, just hopefully that gives some of y'all uh, an understanding of just the process and what we're doing with financial astrology. And if yeah, if you're interested in this, jump into the course. We've also got like a group chat where you can chat with me and other astrologers on the daily basis about the markets. And um, you can also get the predictions too if you're not 
wanting to take the course, I'm charging, it's $30 for just the latest class Venus. And then it's 39 if you want the predictions for just for three months too, not for six months, because I am really encouraging people to learn this stuff. Like I want to teach a man a fish, not give him a fish. So really encouraging people to try to learn um, this rather than just hand them free predictions. All right. Thanks, you guys. Hope that helps. Take care.